Hi, everybody. It's February 5. No, I'm sorry. It's February 6. Two minutes after midnight. February 6, 2020. I'm going to show you just a few clips of the State of the Union address. You may have seen them. But I have to tell you, I see this as one of our biggest, biggest problems, challenges, the horrifying behavior that we see in Americans today. Not too long ago, now I grew up at a time when people had great respect for politicians, not everyone, I'm sure, but the behavior that we saw was, well, there was a dignity to those certainly who held the highest office. I can't say too much about Johnson, but there was a wish in the young to be like them. There was admiration, but there was also uh, decorum and respect and civility and integrity and maturity. There was a maturity in the behavior of adults. And it wasn't that long ago. It's all gone. Decorum, gone. Respect, gone. Civility, gone. Integrity, gone. And maturity? These are people who hold the highest offices in the land. And this is how they behave. It's really frightening. It's horrifying. It's embarrassing. And when you think about the young, the really young, they have adults around them. They watch these adults on TV behaving this way. Who do they look up to? But when you think about the young decades and decades ago, and there was a, a desire to emulate the best of the crowd, well, this kind of behavior, it not only gives the young permission to remain behaving with an immaturity that as they grow up, they continue on with that immaturity. But the adults today have this kind of immaturity. When you think about all of the adults that you've tried to have a healthy, mature relationship with, and I've heard from so many of you, you can't anymore. And adults who are truly children in adult bodies today, the infantilization of America has been brilliant. And we, we continue to get lower and lower and lower. And the rapidity with which we have become so low low level of consciousness, uh, just behaving however the hell we want to behave, lying to people, betraying people, acting in ways that we know are wrong, acting in ways that not too long ago we would have been embarrassed to behave the way so many just now it's it's when you have the majority 
the huge majority behaving in a certain way, it becomes socially acceptable. And it sure is socially acceptable. When you see the State of the Union address, you see all of these people behaving as they did last night. You know that this is our standard. It's, I don't, I don't, it's horrifying to me. All the psychopaths and narcissists get together and they rah-rah themselves. Aren't I great? Look, this pomp and circumstance has never been my thing. When you think of the amount of money that it takes to put on these shows, well, I think that money would have been better spent helping out Americans who need the help. Call me crazy. Ooh, at the State of the Union. Okay, so, snub her. Don't shake her hand. I have uh, heard others say, well, he may not have even seen her hand. I don't believe that. I think he did. There was enough time to have seen her hand there, and he just did not take it. Now, considering three years of all of that, Impeachment, 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 yes, and the impeachment hearing and all the stuff that she said about him and, well, all the stuff that he said about her. This, these are the people in the highest offices in the land behaving like they are in junior high school, behaving with such gross immaturity. You know, when you see the highest, uh, uh, the people in the highest office, President of the United States, House Speaker, behaving this way, you're taking a nosedive. The whole country is taking a nosedive. And when you don't hear from other Americans, how embarrassed they were because these people represent us. You don't hear from other Americans that this kind of behavior is so horrifying. And it, this is the kind of behavior that tells us that we have mentally ill people, quote unquote, representing us. Okay, here's the other clip. Our spirit is still young. The sun is still rising. God's grace is still shining. And my fellow Americans, the best is yet to come. Thank you, God bless you, and God bless America. Thank you very much. Okay, so let's start at the beginning of that. Um, Still young. Here. 
Our spirit is still young. It might have been more honest to say that our spirit is still very immature. But what is our spirit? And what is our spirit? What is the American spirit? I'd love to hear from you guys. And I'd love to hear from all of you. You don't even have to live in this country. What do you think the American spirit is? The sun is still rising. It's getting very dark in the United States. Very dark. God's grace is still shining. No, it's not. No, it really is not. In fact, my hunch, God said, all righty, this is way beyond fixing and turned his back. And my fellow Americans, the best is yet to come. What does that mean? The best is yet to come for the quote-unquote elite. The best is yet to come for people like Trump, but not for you and me. We know what's coming. So the abject lies that Americans listen to and accept. Yeah. He not he not shaking her hand, she ripping up the speech again. I don't think that this just suddenly happened spontaneously. Another staged event. They're setting Americans up. It's, it's, it's so the perfect metaphor for the United States, how it is today. So deeply divided, so ripped in two, as she rips his speech in two. Uh, it's so about to show its two-colored face, the red-blue. Now, this is the kind of behavior when, what do they know about how divided this country is? Oh, they know full well that Americans have already been going for the jugular, you know, fighting the uh, other side. Got that election coming up this year. And already they're fighting one another. It, this is simply to give Americans license to rip one another to shreds, to behave however the hell you want to behave towards the other side. You know, those who are on the red team or the blue team. And it also gives permission for Americans to do whatever the hell they want to do to other Americans. Behave however the hell you want to behave. It is so appalling to see this woman rip up his speech. This is not funny. This is, this is so not funny. This is very serious. And the two of them are setting you up for an attack from the other side because they got you manipulated. They got you to see your average Joe Blow, who happens to be red when you're blue or blue uh, and when you're red, to hate one another. And that's what this guy 
has done for three years. That's what this really tremendously disturbed woman did for three years. It, yeah, they're setting up the teams for the Hunger Games. And who will be destroyed? Not them. You and me. I don't, this sets an example. I, I, I am so horrified, I really am. Um, because when you see this kind of behavior, and then you see it in all Americans, you know, they're, those around you who are behaving in ways that Americans just didn't behave. You know, the adults actually took matters that were serious. They discussed them. And now there's just no discussing anything. So, yeah, behave as we behave. Don't, you know, care about having integrity. Who cares? You don't have to respect one another. You don't have to even be civil. Because those days are over. They're over. And it's right here. These two telling you. It's all over. Uh, and then you listen to this. <laughs> Why did you make the speech at Madam Speaker? Because it was the courteous thing to do, considering the alternatives. She thinks that that was the courteous thing to do, to rip up his speech while still on camera. State of the Union address. She thought it was the courteous thing to do. Considering the alternatives, what? For you to fly over you know, the podium to attack him? These are the people who are in the highest office? Their only qualifications are for the nearest psychiatric institution. And it really is frightening that most Americans are right there with her, that immature. Now, I couldn't even read some of the articles where, you know, people were, yay, Pelosi. Look, I'm out of the matrix. But it's... This affects all of us. The ripple effects of those few seconds are so profound and so dangerous. And again, as I've said, it's really hard to argue the obvious. And this couldn't be more obvious. So Trump, what, oh my God, yeah. He was talking about the economy, best it's ever been. And the few things that I've read in articles about public schools. Uh, and he's done nothing regarding getting rid of Common Core. Yeah, he was campaigning big on that. Common Core, bad standard, get rid of it. Yay, Trump. And he comes in and does nothing. Um, and I guess there's a, uh, what's it called? The Freedom, Education Freedom and Scholarship Act. Oh, and then he does, you know, he, he channels Oprah telling a mother and a young girl, you get a scholarship. 
all the, the, the demagoguery is like so clear too. Demagogue, appeal to emotion. And those scholarships, it's redistributing wealth because the taxpayer is paying for the scholarships. And apparently it was a real hit on socialism. Um, do you realize that we kind of have a fascist socialist system? It's not capitalist. It sure as hell ain't no free market. And it ain't a democracy. We've been a fascist nation for decades. Our federal government was not representing us in the early 80s. In the early 80s, 1980s. And, well, it just became more and more obvious. They represent corporations. They represent those moneyed interests. Those who can put money in their pockets. I don't get it. I, I, I honestly don't get it. Because everything has become so unbelievably, unbelievably obvious. And we've accepted trash to represent us. Trash. Mentally ill, psychopathic, narcissistic trash. Oh, they look good in their expensive attire. Oh, I'm standing in front of a podium and I'm giving the State of the Union address. Oh, look at how many people are standing up as I walk in. Oh, I've got billions upon billions. Oh, look at my, my wife who clearly has had incredibly good um, plastic surgery. But looks a little, hmm, too perfect, you know, the plastic doll. Yeah. The superficial. Oh, I love these people because, well, they're celebrities and they're important and they hold, you know, offices that only a few have and it's so hard to you know become the president of the United States and he was on TV and he's a celebrity a reality TV star that now is the president of the United States oh he was a successful businessman that's what I want to be I want to be a material success So I'll try to emulate a man or a woman, both of whom have no moral core, no integrity, lowest of the low in terms of human behavior, the longer we accept trash to represent us, the more we become trash. You know, the majority of Americans have this strong belief in a broken, disgustingly corrupt, immoral government system. But when, you know, you're relatively comfortable it's easy to ignore it all ignore what's right in your face ignore the truth that's staring you in the face accept all of the huge lies and frankly I don't think any other president has lied the way Trump has lied 
But, you know, he's a big and bold guy, and he likes to be the best at everything. So he's been one hell of a liar, and he just continues on and on and on. And I guess those who may believe him are those who have yet to suffer the consequences of an economy that is artificially propped up by injecting like billions upon billions, what, a hundred billions a day? Digital, digital numbers that can go away in the blink of an eye doesn't create real wealth. It's just this artificial propping up of an economy that they're not ready to pull the plug on. But it's comatose. The best it's ever been. Manufacturing is still low. Factory orders are still in decline. Uh, stores are still closing. Uh, you know, senior citizens have to work because they can't afford to stay home and retire. Senior citizens getting roommates because they can't afford to live. The U.S. pension system broken. Uh, wages still stagnant. But household expenses continue to rise. Uh, pretty much every um, product out there gets more and more expensive. Food. Utilities, rent, homeless continue to grow because they can't, people can't afford rent. Forget about buying a home. Oh, there still are some Americans who are very comfortable. And they don't take a look at now the majority of Americans who are really struggling, really suffering. They don't take a look, so they're ignored. And they just continue to believe the lies that they're fed. But that class of people, of the comfortable, gets smaller every single day. The middle class is so also comatose on life support. And it's easy to get trapped in this delusional bubble that these people create for Americans. You know, I'm just going to believe that things are not as bad as so many try to tell me. But eventually, that bad gets to everybody. These people are walking you off a cliff. And it's really time that Americans begin to face the music because, well, that music is truly the music that those on the Titanic dance to. That's the music that's being played. It's... So the, the hit on socialism... What's the hundred billions of dollars propped up or, or dumped into, you know, Wall Street? What's the, um, <clears throat> what's the representation of corporations and not us? Well, that's fascist. But we also, you know, the aid that we give to farmers... Now, all of that is not the farmer's fault. It's the system that has been set up, designed by the few. Because we didn't care so much what they were doing, you know, after we did our part. We walked out and voted. That was it. Then we didn't really pay attention to the details of what these people were doing. 
So we got ourselves into a real mess. And now the problems are off the charts. Everybody's blaming everybody while the same people who are blaming people are turning around saying, well, don't play the blame game. I, it's truly scary to see how mentally ill our entire country is. We don't resolve any problem. Problems that we have, you know, when we just split off from people. No work to resolve anything. Three years impeachment. Three years. Listening to that horror show. And of course he was acquitted. Because his crimes are no less or more than her crimes and his crimes and all of those who attended this affair. Yeah. Because they can all be brought up on charges. They're all criminals. That's what our government is. What you are looking at is just a friggin' mafia. That's it. The American mafia. What Trump has done is no different from Obama. Obama was no different from Bush. Clinton, Bush, all of them. Criminals. They all are treasonous. It was all a stage show. Wasting an awful lot of money, wasting an awful lot of time. But Americans were fine with that. They were fine with the show, the immaturity listening to these people pretty much on a daily basis rip one another to shreds with those fabulous tweets from the President of the United States to the really sick and twisted uh, things that this... Oof, I'm not even sure. There, There's no name for this right here. She really does need to be locked up but it went on for three years, getting Americans to hate one another more and more. How fabulous the show was. The reality TV show, American Politics. That's what it is. And then, <laughs> No shame, of course, do they have. No. Mr. Adam Speaker. Uh, because it was the courteous thing to do, considering the alternatives. Now, she seems like she's on a lot of psychiatric medications because she's very shaky. Her body, it just, she gets me nervous watching her. It was the courteous thing to do. Yeah, jumping over the desk to, I don't know, bite him, rip his hair out of his head, or what is the alternative? And then we have people like this guy who grind in to the American public who listened to him, the lie as truth. And meanwhile, earlier tonight, two Democratic Congresswomen, also deeply impacted by their derangement syndrome, just could not bring themselves to sit and listen to the president's speech. Yes, both Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, the real Speaker of the House, and Congresswoman Presley boycotted the State of the Union. They were missed sorely 
Naturally, Ocasio-Cortez spent the night sulking on Instagram. And meanwhile, Senator Lindsey Graham tweeted, quote, I can't blame AOC for boycotting the State of the Union. It must be painful for a committed socialist to hear the record of accomplishments regarding economic growth and prosperity we have achieved under President Trump. We will scroll them again as we speak. Join us now with reaction. South Carolina Senator Lindsey Graham. The economic growth of Americans. Wow. Graham, uh, you know, you're tweeting. And here's another one. Oh, wow, man. This guy. Okay. These are psychopathic murderers. Considering all of the war crimes that, well, they should be thrown in jail. But, hey, it's the American way, right? Invade countries, steal their resources, kill the innocent civilians there. That's what we do. See, when you go along with everything that happens in your society, you become just like them. There's no difference. When you don't stand up for what's right and you consider and, and you just continue to sit doing nothing, you become one of them. That I actually retweeted you because you were on a you're on a roll today. You had your talk show game on, uh, just like when you said BS on the show twice. I was very proud of you. Wish I could do it. I have to deal with you know six weeks of getting beat up. But uh, here's my: we are watching something historic unfold, and that's our country succeeding. That's one America, and then the it other really side. Yes, yeah, a compelling narrative that every American from every walk, uh, walk of life is doing better economically. Our military is strong uh, since Reagan. I've never seen it this strong. Terrorists are dead that deserve to be dead. And when that soldier came to see his wife and his two kids, I just, I just lost it. So I can't. These people disgust me. They disgust me. They should disgust all Americans, but the mental illness has truly become so widespread in our country that they, the majority don't know what is right or wrong. They don't know what is immoral and moral. They don't know the difference. It's clear that that is true. And they're as hypocritical as all of these people. It's like they feed off one another. You cannot become a lying nation if the people that you were lying to stood up and demanded the truth instead of accepting the lie. The liar and the acceptor are intertwined. They dance together. If people didn't accept the lie the liars would not be able to continue because the lie would die. It's the acceptance of the lie that has gotten us right here. You listen to these people talk about Americans. All walks of life are doing better economically. You tell me. How you doing? All of these people, it's scary. It truly is scary, this guy. You can't 
You cannot have a healthy society when the majority are truly delusional in the clinical sense. This is not funny. It's not a joke. Because these are the people who are bringing us down. But when you see the House Speaker rip up a speech of the President of the United States, it does not matter what happened the day before. Does not matter. What happened even five minutes before? The ceremony began. You would expect these two to know that they have to behave with some sort of decorum, but they don't. In fact, they do the opposite. They're setting you up for the Hunger Games.